Hello and welcome, I'm Sarah, and today I'm going to show you how to create a background for your game using Unity. And um, this background style will be having a single background image um, and several foreground objects, so things like platforms, or they could be things like if you're doing a top-down game, walls or buildings or such and such. So uh, to start with, I expect you to already have a background image and foreground images created. Um, and I also expect you to have a character that can move about already created as well. Um, but we're not going to cover those during this tutorial. So to start things off, the first thing you'll need to do is create a scene for your game, uh, for this level that you're going to create. So uh, we'll do that by going to File and uh, New Scene. And what you'll get here is now an untitled scene in your hierarchy. And you can use Control S or File and Save to save this scene. Now I'm going to put mine in a subfolder, but you should really put yours in a Scenes folder if you don't already have one created. Um, inside the as the main assets folder for your project. I'm going to put mine in my examples folder since this is an example I'm doing for all of you. And I'm going to call mine tutorial background and instead of one image, which is my last tutorial, this will be the foreground objects. Now you probably should name this either level one, level two, whatever level it is, or you can name it just in game if you only have one level for your game. All right, so I will save my scene here and you'll know that it's worked whenever you look in your hierarchy and you see your scene's name up at the top. Now, before we continue, if you are using Unity Playground, which is a uh, set of uh, scripts and settings that will allow you to create games very easily without any code, um, if you are using Unity Playground, I recommend turning it off for this tutorial because um, Unity Playground, while very helpful in simplifying a lot of the settings in Unity, does uh, for some reason hide the editor for your colliders, and you're going to need that for this tutorial. So to turn Unity Playground off, you go up to the Playground menu at the top and you choose Turn Playground Off. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now make sure you turn it back on when you're done with this tutorial so that you are able to use it again, because it's a wonderful tool. If you are using Unity Playground, it's great for learning. Our next step is to actually drag our image that we want to use for the background of the game into the scene. So I've got a background image here and I'm going to drag it into my scene. And you'll want to set this up to whatever size you like. I'm going to use the Rect tool to change the size of it um, easily in my scene here. Okay, so I've got this background image set up. Now yours may look different, doesn't really matter. Um, but what I have done is I've used my game window on the side here as a guide to make sure my background image is big enough to cover the entire camera area. And you can also see the camera in the scene as this white uh, line that is um, showing on top of my background image. All right, once I've got the background image set up, it's time to start dragging in the foreground images. So I have a foreground image here of a platform that I'm going to drag into the scene. And I can resize it to be whatever size I want, okay? Now, if you notice um, here, if I drag my foreground image up, it suddenly disappears. And that seems really weird if you're not used to how Unity sorts its sprite layers. So because I just dragged these two objects into the scene, they don't have any um, particular layer or order set up. So uh, each object, every uh, sprite in Unity will have a sorting layer and an order within that layer. And the sorting layer basically determines what draws in front of other objects. It's sort of like layers on a canvas where a painter is painting. So things that are drawn first will be closer to the canvas, farther away from you, and things that are drawn later will be closer to you. So if I click on my background here, um, the background image, I can see that I have additional settings for the sprite renderer. Now that might be um, not expanded for you if you uh, are just now looking at it. So you need to click on the little arrow to expand the additional settings and you'll see there's a sorting layer and an order in layer. So I want to change the sorting layer to background. I want to change and leave the order in layer as zero. But if I click on my platform, um, I think I'll change this sorting layer to gameplay because this platform is part of the actual gameplay of the game and that will put it in front. If I wanted to put it in the background, I could still do that, but then I would want to change the order in layer to something larger. And that way, even if I put it up above, even though it's on the same background layer as that 
um, image, it will still be in front. All right, so you could either leave it at gameplay or you can put it in the background and put its order in layer to a higher number. Okay, so now I have a platform. Now you'll probably want more than that, but for now we'll just do a single foreground object, whatever your object is. Yours may not be a platform. It may be something like um, a wall or a house or a rock or something, whatever it is, something that you want to be part of your game's environment that the player is going to be able to collide with. Okay, so I've got my background here. And I want this piece of background to have collision on it. So to do that, I'm going to select the background and then I'm going to go down to add a component in that background, um, in that platforms uh, inspector. All right. So we're talking about my foreground object here, not the image in the background, not the, the backdrop, if you will. We're talking about this foreground object. So I've got this platform selected. And if I click add component, I can add a collider to it. So if I type C-O-L, there'll be a lot of colliders available. So first of all, it's really important that if you're doing a 2D game that you use the 2D colliders, you should only pick a collider that has 2D at the end. And this is because Unity actually has two physics systems and they do not talk to each other. So it's very important that you always choose the 2D collider. So you can choose any one that you like, and since this is a very simple platform, I'm going to pick a Box Collider 2D. So the Box Collider has been created, and actually the Box Collider has attempted to shape itself to my sprite. But as you'll see with my sprite, there's actually some blank space at the bottom of it because it's designed to work in a tile if I so choose to use it in that way. So in order to fix it so that we don't have collision on this blank space, I'm going to click on Edit Collider over on my inspector. And it's the image that looks a bit like the Steam logo. So if I click on Edit Collider, I then have these four uh, filled in boxes on the edges of my collider in the scene view. And I can now change the size of those uh, that collider by dragging those boxes. Once I'm done, I can click Edit Collider again. And you can see, it's a bit hard to see on this background, but you can see the um, green outline here, and that's where my actual collider is. So it's now in the right place on this object. So there's one other type of object you might end up having, and that is a background or foreground object that doesn't have collision on it. So I've got that here. I've got a little bush that I maybe have. Uh, maybe you would have this if you wanted just um, a little image to appear on one of your platforms. You wanted to make it a little more interesting. You might have trees or flowers or other decorations that you want to manually place in your environment and you don't want to uh, have them have collision. That's fine. You can still place them in your environment just by dragging them out of your game uh, of your project folder, just like a normal sprite. And you just don't need to add collision to them if you don't want them to have collision. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is set up a few more colliders, sorry, a few more boxes and um, platforms in my scene. And I will pause the video and you, you should pause the video. I will take a moment to do that away from your site. Um, you set up your scene how you like and we'll come back once you, see your, you have several of your foreground objects placed in your scene and we'll test out the scenes together. Okay, our next step is to actually test our scene. So you can see in my scene here, I now have four different platforms and they all have colliders on them. So the next step is to bring in our player and, th and therefore be able to test the scene. So I've created a prefab for my player when I set it up earlier. And remember a prefab is basically setting up your player's game objects, uh, game object in the scene and then dragging that game object into your a project folder and it will create a file based on that game object that contains all of its settings and then I can just drag that file back into a scene and have my game uh, my player all set up and ready to go so prefabs are really useful in that way and that's why I've already created one here so my player is here and ready to go they have their basic platforming player they've got left and right movement and jumping but you'll notice a problem right away when I press play um, they fall right through the floor. And that's because the player doesn't actually have a collider on them yet. And in order for two things to collide in Unity, both of the things need to have a collider. So let's give a collider to this player. 
by clicking on the player, scrolling down and adding a component to them. And again, it must be a 2D collider. So for platform players, I would recommend using a capsule collider. Um, and the reason for that is that it's still fairly uh, almost rectangular shaped. However, it does have rounded edges and that means that they're less likely to get caught on things. Uh, you can use a box collider, a sphere collider, or even a polygon collider if you like. I wouldn't suggest using a polygon collider unless your player really does have quite complicated um, geometry. An example might be for maybe a spaceship game where you've got this sort of triangular geometry. It doesn't really fit any of the other types. For this player, a capsule collider will be perfect. So that's what I'm going to add, a capsule collider 2D. Make sure you use the 2D version. Now, once I've done that, you can see that my player now has this green outline around them, but it's not quite how I like. So I'm going to use the Edit Collider button again and bring that in a little bit so that my player um, has a bit more of a snug fit with their collider. And you generally want the collider to be a little bit smaller than the player themselves. Um, and this is because you wanna make sure it definitely doesn't include any empty air. The only exception I'm making there is at the feet because I do need it to actually be at the player's feet level. But I brought it in a bit so his ears are sticking out, parts of his hat are sticking out. And the reason for that is that if a player uh, is playing the game and something hits them and it, it seems like it shouldn't have hit them, they'll be quite upset. But if something doesn't hit them even though maybe it should have, they're not going to be upset about that. So it's better to err on the side of caution um, and make sure your players have a good experience. Okay, so my player's collider is now uh, set up. So if I press play now, uh, my player should fall to the ground, which is exactly what I want. Um, however, if I move, they immediately fall over. <laughs> um, and that's because of a setting on my rigid body. And so at this point, my player would kind of roll all around and start spinning and this is not, this is not ideal. So. To fix this, I need to go to their rigid body over here and I need to go down and choose it. Yours may be um, still collapsed. If it is, just click on constraints inside the rigid body and choose freeze rotation in the Z direction. And this will keep your player from moving, uh, from rotating based on physics. Now, if you are using um, rotation as part of your player's controls, um, you may need to leave that unchecked because uh, you may be using that physics rotation already. So an example for that might be a spaceship game where you're rotating your game or a driving game where you're rotating your player as part of the controls. But for a platformer or sort of a top-down maze game, most of those games you do not want that rotation. So you're going to click on the freeze rotation in the Z axis. Okay, so if I do that now, my player should no longer uh, rotate. So I can now move from side to side and I can actually jump if I choose, but I can only jump once. And that's because in the script that I happen to be using, my jumping code is looking for a tag on the ground to indicate that it is ground so that it knows it can jump. And this is using the Unity Playground, but it's actually how a lot of jumping scripts work. Um, so I'd recommend tagging your ground as ground, no matter whether you're using the Unity Playground or your own custom script. So let's do that now. It's very easy to tag something. Um, if you select, and I'm going to select them all at once, but you can do them individually if you like, but I'm going to select multiple game objects by clicking on the first one and holding control, and I'm gonna select each of my platforms. This is the ground that when the player touches it, it should reset their ability to jump. So I'm gonna click on all the ground, I'm gonna click on the tag in the inspector, that's at the very top of the inspector. And by default, these are set to untagged, but we want them to be ground. So my project already has a ground tag, tag set up, if yours does not, um, whenever you click on that tag, you can choose add tag and you can add a ground tag at that point. If you're using Unity Playground, yours will already have the ground tag set up and you can just select it from the list. So that makes it a lot easier. And that will allow your jumping to work if your jumping uses the ground tag. Again, Unity Playground's jumping does. If you have your own jumping script, you'll have to code it so that it uses that ground tag. Okay, so now if I press play and I try jumping, 
I can jump once, again, as many times as I want, as long as I am touching the ground. Okay, so now I can move over to the other platforms and I can fall down. And of course, if I, I, I can't quite jump back up there, but my player is working how they're supposed to be working. And all of these um, objects are working kind of how they're meant to be working. Now, the only thing that isn't set up maybe exactly how I would choose is my player is actually set up on the default sorting layer. Now this isn't presenting a problem because our background is actually set up on the background layer and that's set to be behind our player. But just to make sure that things don't cause problems in the future, I'm going to go ahead and change my player to the correct sorting layer. And the sorting layer, remember, is for the order that these uh, sprites and images draw on the screen. So I'm going to click on my player, I'm going to choose a sorting layer, and I'm going to choose gameplay because our player should be in the front. Okay, now the only other thing to remember is if you are using Unity Playground, make sure you turn it back on by using the Playground menu on the top and choosing Turn Playground On. This will turn back on your simplified interface that makes uh, using Unity Playground a little bit easier. Um, make sure you save your scene, and once you're done with that, you should now have uh, the way to create backgrounds quite easily. And you can make multiple levels with this if you want to. Um, the only thing we have not covered is how to make a level that is larger than your camera. Because right now in this, um, my camera is uh, fixed to this one area, but if I wanted my camera to extend uh, and I wanted my level to keep going out, so I'm gonna say I wanted to have more uh, of these platforms out this way and have uh, more areas for my player to go explore, I would need my camera to move, which we can you can do with a script or you can parent it to the player, which is the easiest way but I also want my background to extend or to follow me perhaps. So if you want your background to follow the camera, all you have to do is drag your background onto the camera. So over here in the hierarchy, I've got my background image. I'm gonna drag it onto the camera and I'm gonna drag my camera onto the player so the camera follows the player. So we've kind of got a multi-tiered system going here. My background's following my camera, my camera's following my player. Now you might have a different method for your camera to follow your player and that's fine. But to get the background to follow the camera, the easiest way is to just drag it onto it. So if I press play now, if you look in the game view, you'll see what's happening. My background is now following me. So the only things that are, uh, that I, my player is moving around uh, in relation to is the platforms the background image is now following them. So that is an optional way that you can make your background extend, you know, be useful for a larger level than what you originally uh, maybe designed it for. I believe that's everything for this tutorial. Hopefully it was useful to you. There will be still another tutorial on the way for how to do tile maps and another one for how to do scrolling backgrounds. Uh, so check out those if you want more information on those topics.